What? That was so fast. Hey everyone, Henry Yellow here. Welcome back. Right now, we are going to watch Sabotage from 1936. Now, just to let you guys know, this will most likely be my final Hitchcock run, which means after this round, there will be probably no more Hitchcock movie reactions on YouTube. Some lesser known movies like Torn Curtain, Topaz, or Silent films like The Lodger, which is an earlier Hitchcock work, I probably will watch it as a Patreon special. After this run is over, I probably will make a short little video to explain more on that so you can check out that video to know, you know, what's next for Hitchcock. But for now, let's watch Sabotage. Sabotage. Willful destruction of buildings or machinery with the object of alarming a group of persons or inspiring public uneasiness. Oh, blackout. Sand. Sabotage. The sand could sabotage the entire electrical station? How did sand do that? <laughs> we got to have our money back. They want their money back, but we can't afford it. I do wish Mr. Verloc would come. <laughs> Huh. Okay, it's implying that it's him because he just washed the sand out of his hands. When did you get home? I haven't been hurt. I was asleep. The fuel's gone there? No, it's everywhere, in the streets and the trams. And the audience downstairs wants their money back. Well, I'll give it back. We can't possibly afford it. I've got some money coming in. Go on. It's an act of God, I tell you. And what do you call an act of God? I call your face one, and you won't get your money back on that. <laughs> if you'd studied Article 257, Sanction B, it says definitely no. You didn't know that, did you? You're all ignorant. Now, if you take my advice, you go off home, because there's nothing doing here. I thought I told you not to interfere. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to get your money back. Oh, you're crazy. I had it all fixed. Yeah, he saved you the money. Thank you for your trouble. I'm sure you meant well. Not at all. I like trouble. The vegetables is all ready for dishing up. I've got to hurry home now. Of course, my husband's having trouble with his kidneys again. Your young brother's looking out. Trump, what, the kidneys? No, the vegetables. Ooh. Broke the plate, tore the clothes. Well, Stevie, have you done all this by yourself? Oh, come on. Don't be so modest. Always dead woman, Mrs. Jones, manages to make the cabbage brown. I'm always telling you, you like things green. Stevie, run next door and get a nice big head of lettuce. Oh, good evening, Mr. Verloc. So you came home just in time to see the trouble, eh? I've been in all the afternoon. But I could have sworn I saw you come in just about... Well, you were wrong. That's a scary window. I thought someone was committing a murder. So did I. No, Sergeant, you saw what happened tonight. I could have sworn I saw Verloc come back in the middle of it all. He said he'd never been out at all. His wife confirmed it. Naturally. She would if she was in it. What's the point of all this wrecking? Making trouble at home to take our minds off what's going on abroad. Okay, so he is actually part of the police force. Penny each pineapples! Pineapples, please! What's them bubbles? Dad has the fish got the cups. You never kept if you had to live on ants eight. Ants eggs? I hope you're satisfied with last night's show. I think you'll agree I've earned my money. You made London laugh. When one sets out to put the fear of death into people, it's not helpful to make them laugh. I once read a sign in Piccadilly Circus calling it the center of the world. I can visit there in a couple of days' time. We have a small parcel in the cloakroom at the underground station. Let's say a parcel of fireworks. Explosive. I'm not going to be connected with anything that means loss of life. If you think you're so well off that... You know I'm not. You know my position. Surely you have some kind friends who would help you? Go and see this man. No wonder he was fine with paying out the, the money to all the disgruntled customers because he thought that he was going to get paid by sabotaging the lights. But apparently not. 
people in London laughed at the blackout. I think they're making like they're making light of the situation. That's a terrible pun. Anyways, uh, I guess they're just looking at a positive side. Instead of panicking in the dark, they laugh. And that's great. But now he wants him to put an explosive that would mean that it will kill someone. Saturday next, Lord Mayor's show day, lots of people. After laying a million eggs, the female oyster changes her sex. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> After laying a million eggs, she doesn't want to lay anymore. It's just a parcel though. I don't think enough explosive could be contained there to like bring down a couple of buildings. Wait, wrong way? Excuse me, can I help you? <laughs> he almost sliced himself to pieces. Isn't it fat? You'd be fat too if you were fed corn and bits of bread all day long. How about a nice juicy steak with me? What about it? I'm all for it. Have you ever been here before? No, never. I think Stevie would like a nice poached egg on toast. Now have a mixed salad. <laughs> he looks so sad. Well, that's enough to make the roast beef turn in its gravy. <laughs> when did you come over from America? About a year ago. Business wasn't too good over there. People used to go to the States because business wasn't too good over here. How things working out now? Not too good? Not terribly. Has Mr. Verloc sideline? No, but we're quite satisfied with things as they are. Mr. Verloc's very kind to Stevie. And that means a lot to Stevie's sister. Means everything. He's the quietest, most harmless, home loving person. Yeah, Mrs. Verloc doesn't know anything. She knows nothing, sir. Nothing at all. What makes you think so? She has a straight answer to everything besides her manner. Pretty woman. Verloc went to the zoo aquarium, evidently by appointment. He then proceeded to R65 Liverpool Road, Islington, which is a bird shop. Nothing will make it settle down. I've tried all ways. Whistling to it, clapping my hands, frying bacon, no use. Plenty of watercress and you must whistle to him. Me whistle? Perhaps you'd like me to sit in the cage and him do the housework. You buy a bird, just listen to him sing. My daughter. Is the little girl's father dead? I don't know. The father went out to buy milk and never came back. If I were to mix, say, a little tomato sauce with some strawberry jam, then... Saturday is the day and the hour 1.45. By the time you receive it, everything will have been set in motion. A timer. My dear, I must have put it there myself. Yeah, it was locked. <laughs> My god, I was expecting the whole place to blow up. <laughs> Look there, what's he doing? They'll raid you one day. I shall give them a nice warm welcome if they do. I want a nice singing canary. Everyone wants a canary, but will they take care of it well? I have written to Max to ask him whether he would care to undertake a little job for me in case he do... Never mind, in case he something fixed something. I wonder whether you would care to call. Oh, yes, looking for someone to uh, do the job for him because he doesn't want to do it himself but honestly I think even if he gets someone to do it for him he's still involved which makes him as guilty if people die it's just like a way to shift responsibility and make himself feel less guilty wouldn't it be grand to have steak whenever you like you soon get sick of it yes I wouldn't I don't see how you could get sick of things to eat he says gangsters are not nearly so frightening as you'd think some of them are quite ordinary looking like you and me and Mr Verloc perhaps he's right I have an appointment with Mr. Verloc. Pass one, Jack. Thank you. Well, all our troubles are over now. Well, it's not too different from the theatres nowadays. Speaking of which, I haven't been to a theatre in a really long time. Since Covid, I think. Hello, Ted, where are you going? Just gonna have a word with Mr. Verloc. What's in there? Oh, it's under the screen. Oh, Where's the projector? I'll give old Mr. V a surprise. Dang, it looks like he's about to fall off. And afterward... I'll settle with you when you've done the job. So I'd better... Oh, he was careless. What happened? I was showing Ted the back of the screen with the loudspeakers. Wasn't that all right? 
I know this guy. Good night. That is Detective Sergeant Spencer of Scotland Yard. This job is off. Out. Finished. We go quick from here and scatter. And keep scattered. He was in another movie, wasn't he? I definitely saw that face before. But he was probably thinner. When you had lunch with that fellow, he's a detective from Scotland Yard, spying on us, on me. Why should he? What is there to find out? It must be one of those fellows who came here tonight. Where's Ted? He's gone. Of course, I didn't like the idea, but I couldn't refuse. See, it was official. You must have been showing some funny sort of films, I dare say. You know, perhaps a bit too hot. A bit too hot. Close. Guess he has to do it himself. An old man just left this. I thought he must have made a mistake. It's only a pair of birds for Stevie. You're terribly good to him. Uh, go and call him, will you? <laughs> I mean, her face like full of suspicion. She doesn't even look happy that he got birds for Stevie. You're terribly good to him, but the judgmental look. One forty-five. Not that much time. You had us fooled, all right, trying to make Stevie and me think you were a friend. Do you think I enjoyed it? Whatever it was, I'm sure my husband hasn't done anything wrong. I hope you're right. Did these men arrive together or one by one? They've got him surrounded. By the way, has that two reeler gone over to the counter yet? There's another little job I want doing at the same time. You know, kill two birds with one stone. You'll better get along now. You'll have to walk all the way. What for? You can't take film tins in public vehicles. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot. You can't? White zombie. The fascinating white zombie? His comb is broken. For God's sake, why don't you go? Don't forget it's got to be there by 1.30 at the latest. Oh, uh, Steve, what do you got there? Hmm, Bartholomew the Strangler. That sounds a juicy one. I'm coming here to ask for your help. Nothing more. Any help I can give him, of course. About yourself, Mr. Verloc, uh, when did you first come to this country? The bomb is already on the way. What did it cause his teeth to fall out? Why, it comes in the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking something along those lines. Decay can be arrested, instantaneously arrested. And by what? The copper. Yes, exactly. So what, they just want you to apply copper on the teeth? Oh, all right, all right, all right. Stay where you are, don't get excited. <laughs> right. Here we are. Now come along, open your mouth, that's a good boy. Now we now proceed to use the brush. It refreshes the mouth, removes all traces of halitosis. Halli what? Bad breath to you, sir. Same to you. Thank you, I don't need it. <laughs> I have here a bottle of Lothwell. Another product. Put it on the air like that, you see? <laughs> oh, too much! You are now groomed to stardom, as they say. Go on, buzz off, you little basket. <laughs> His hair was better before. That thing's gonna blow up. Along with Stevie. Hey, where are you going? Go on, back to your place. Go on, go on. Go on. Oh, the background is fake. Who? <laughs> whoa. He doesn't have much time left. Unless somebody is able to stop the bomb. People are definitely gonna buy, uh, going to die. I said, you think you'll get to the visit itself at one thirty? Yes, one thirty in the morning. <laughs> one thirty in the morning. Then they're flammable. Going off, off, big boy. Oh, because they're flammable. You can stay as long as you promise not to sit about me or any of the passengers. Thank you. How does being on a public transport make them burst into flames, or is it just like a general safety concern? <laughs> <laughs> Cute little puppy. Oh man, he doesn't have much time. What was the time just now? He only has, what, 10 minutes left? Wait, only a few minutes left. Oh no. It's gonna blow. 
back in 1936 and traffic jams are already this bad. The bird sings. No, everyone on the bus died. A whole busload of people have been blown up in the West End. I can't be in two places at the same time, can I? I suppose not. Well, he doesn't know Stevie died. Man, the bodies of those people must be littered everywhere. Bartholomew the String. That's a film tin, isn't it? No, sardines. Well, he didn't have to be sarcastic. What is he writing? I didn't mean any harm to come to the boy. Do be reasonable. What would it have been if you had lost me? Bad argument to use right now. She just lost her brother. You'll have to pull yourself together, my girl. But Stan can't be undone. The little ship they built together. Your Scotland Yard friend from next door. Blame him. I'd have carried the thing myself, but he was hanging around watching, spying. I couldn't get away. Perhaps if we had a kid of our own. Bad suggestion, bad time. Hmm. Cartoon animation was actually pretty good even back then. Never green. Why can't that woman cook green stuff any better? I'm sure she's imagining Mr. Verloc exploding the pieces on that bus. Silence is deepening. <laughs> what? That was so fast. That was literally a split second. I <laughs> don't and she's dead. Oof. What? Stevie. Well, he pretty much asked for it if he hadn't. You know, if you had just sat down and calmed down, she got her revenge. Pretty sure she can claim self-defense. You know why I'm here? Yes. I have to arrest him. You can't. The evidence is against him, I admit. But nothing's going to happen to you. What happens to you means a lot to me. I didn't want to tell you how I felt about you, but there it is. For God's sake, what happened? He killed Stevie. Hold on, wait a minute. Is he going to help her cover up the murder? She can just say it's self-defense. You realize what this means to you? You're not guilty. I know it was an accident. Anyway, you only did the hands job for it. I don't care anymore. You're telling me you have nothing more to live for, isn't it? We don't need passports for the company, do we ask for weekend tickets? The train leaves at nine. You shut up, I don't want to hear another word from you. Now go straight to that cinema and bring that birdcage right back before the police get there and find it. Follow that taxi. Well, this is somebody they can frame for the murder. Whatever happened? Are you in charge? Sorry, no time now, madam. But I'm Mrs. Bellock. Oh. I told him I wanted to make a statement. Mrs. Bellock, you can make your statement later at the station. You wait here. Your husband will be along in a minute. It's no But use. Mrs. Bellock. Yes, no time now, I'm afraid. Later. Hmm. Come on, Grandpa, open up. You open that door, I look this high light. Oh. Better clear the cinema. I'm staying here. Well, you've got a wife. All the more reason why I should stop. <laughs> Well, he's in deep trouble now. 
This is Vella. Is your husband inside there? He knows nothing, sir. Why do you keep interfering, Spencer? He's dead. Oh, he really had a bomb on him. Whoa, this is a much more devastating bomb. Must have had the strawberry jam and the tomato sauce. And there's enough left to identify? I wouldn't say so, sir. You better get a first aid man to attend to that head. Well, he's lucky he's still alive. You better look after Mrs. Bella. Her husband's dead. Blown to glory. <laughs> more like blown to pieces. Is that girl psychic? She said that Verloc was dead, sir. Well, you don't need second sight in a case like this. But she said it before. Or was it after? Well, good for her, I guess. So the movie is saying that the bad guys got what's coming to them. Mrs. Verloc said they came to London because the business in America wasn't so good. But now they're here and business is still so-so. The grass is always greener on the other side. You always think, oh, the other side is better, the other person's doing better and all that. But when you're there, you realize, oh, you know, the grass on the other side or another side is better. And because their business isn't doing very well, the Mr. Verloc somehow found a sideline, which is to commit acts of uh, terror. Never mess with someone who knows how to make a bomb. The bomb that the guy carried was so much more powerful than the bomb that he gave to uh, Carl, Mr. Verloc. Mr. Verloc's bomb blew up a bus. The bomber's bomb blew up an entire cinema. Mr. Verloc's death came so quickly, just to, ah, don't, and then boom, stabbed him straight in the heart, instant death. And I'm so glad that uh, Mrs. Verloc wasn't able to make a full statement so the police doesn't su suspect her at all. So good for her. Assuming she won't be traumatized by guilt the entire rest of her life, she should be able to lead a very normal and good life with the police officer, Ted. Do you think Verloc got what was coming to him? I think he did. Well, that's it for Sabotage. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.